Raphael was 1,100 kilometers north of Antarctica when the accident happened. My boat suddenly upside down, very hard. He sent a message for help, but the nearest air sea rescue center was 2,000 kilometers away in Fremantle, in Western Australia. They could not reach him in time. The closest person to Raphael was Pete Goss. The problem was I was 160 miles from Raphael. I would be turned around and, and take this boat back into what were pretty, pretty horrific conditions. But if Pete didn't make it, we may have lost Raphael. Pete was 250 kilometers away. He turned his boat round. After three hours, Raphael's boat turned back over. He got his life raft ready, but a large wave took the life raft away from him. Without a life raft, Raphael could not survive. What I was really hungry for was information. I just wanted his position. I would get a position roughly every, every two hours would come in, so I knew effectively where I was going. Pete Goss was still 20 hours away. The rescue center in Fremantle sent a plane with supplies for Raphael. The plane took seven hours to reach Raphael. The aircraft's not designed to rescue people. We can drop them uh, safety equipment and uh, life rafts and food and so on, but we can't actually pick them up. The idea there is to uh, let the wind and tide push the containers down uh, to the survivor. The rescue team took photos of Raphael on his sinking boat. People saw these photos in newspapers around the world. But we had to leave him at that point and go and find Peter and uh, relay the information to him. They would box search an area, and then two hours later, uh, another position would come through, and I would search that area, and then another position would come through, and it was really looking for a, a needle in a haystack. Because of the drift, the position would move. We saw our primary role then was to uh, get Peter to the life raft in the uh, quickest possible manner and ensure Raphael was rescued. We have you now visual, three miles from your position. The seas were quite big, and it was incredible how close he was before I could see him. I, I saw Pete uh, perhaps in uh, 15 uh, meters. I just thought, fantastic. The next phase was, was to get him on the boat. That's the high-risk part of the, of the exercise. If uh, I fell in, in the water, I am dead. Once he was clipped to the boat, I knew I had him then. All I could see was his eyes. I'll never forget his eyes and, and the de depth of emotion and gratitude. I uh, made a cup of tea with lots and lots of sugar in it and started to get fluids in him. I just wanted to go to sleep, so I was absolutely exhausted. Pete and Raphael sailed to Hobart in Australia. Do you feel, do you feel like a hero? No. Pete left Raphael in Hobart, but stayed on his boat. He wanted to finish the race. He still had to sail 19,000 kilometers. Pete finished 10 weeks later in France, and the first person to welcome him was Raphael. I was unaware of the extent of the interest in, in the rescue until the finish, and apparently there was 150,000 people there, which was just incredible.